Let's put our hands and receive Prophet Dr. Thomas. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Katika jina la Yesu Christo. Karibu sana. Karibu sana. We honor you, sir. Welcome, welcome. Take your seats. Open your Bibles to Proverbs 4. It says, Hear the instruction of a father because I give you good counsel, even doctrine. And um, it goes on to say, Get wisdom and with it get understanding. For wisdom is the principal thing, but when you get it, you got to get wisdom, you get wisdom, you got to get understanding. If you don't have any wisdom properly, and I see a lot of people don't in certain places, you, you, you're not going to progress to get anywhere you want to get to. And I want to speak to the whole, uh, I don't know, the whole church world, the whole body of Christ and uh, say this for just a few moments. And I have some other meetings, but... Uh, Lift your hands right now. Uh, ask the Holy Spirit to do something for you today. Please do. Because if you don't get that, guess what? <laughs> no progress. I wanted to pray when I was uh, just thinking about this. Father, I want to say expose every fraudulent uh, situation, person, uh, operation, whatever is not of you or from you, it'll be stopped in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for even this region and land that you're going to begin to cause the new thing that you've ordained. Not here, but somewhere in the realm of where all the roads meet is where God is going to move next. And the Lord is going to do something so phenomenal in uh, this land, this part of the world here. It's going to be just amazing. But the Lord, the Lord is saying he wants people to receive his wisdom and his touch. Yeah, Lord, I get it. I know, I know, I know, I know. The Lord's talking to me. And he wants you to find his key of wisdom. The key of wisdom, the golden key, I can call it. It unlocks everything. <laughs> It literally, it literally turns your life from foolishness into a fantastic world. How many would like that? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Thank God for my friend Bishop Michael who came with me. I didn't get to say anything in the first service. I... I felt so rushed, but uh, it was a good meeting. That was a good meeting. Those are beautiful people. Oh, I was, I was surprised. And the Lord is uh, going to do something in this land. How many believe that? I don't know where exactly, but I just want to say what I feel the Holy Ghost saying. It'll be in a place where all the roads meet, somewhere in the heart of the, uh, of the, of the area. For this region and then even the, that other town, I won't name it now, the other town that's over there a little further out. There's something that God's going to do and extract from here for his own will and his purpose. I felt this in the spirit this morning and I didn't have the instruction to say it in the last meeting we did this morning, but I, I feel to say it here. Now... I'm just going to be a few moments. I'm going to drop this word and I'm going to leave you. The Lord says, get wisdom and get understanding. Someone write that down. 
Write it down in your phone or on a notepad. Don't write it on your hand. Don't do that. Why? Because you, by the nighttime, you won't, it won't be there anymore. Write it on something tangible that you can keep. Write it in your Bible. Proverbs chapter 4. Basically, I don't want to just say the key verse of 5 or 7 or 2, because there's also the 20th verse in Proverbs 4, and to the 22nd verse, it talks about health coming from, uh, from the word of God. So the whole fourth chapter of Proverbs is very, extremely powerful. And I want to say that as a text from heaven, that the Lord is going to begin to cause you to have what the pages of his Bible says. How many have your Bible here? I see some people have, a few people have your Bible. Hold your Bible up. Hold your Bible up if you have it. Now, you can't get everything that's in here because it's a big book. 18, uh, how many chapters? 1,889 chapters, I think. If I remember right, maybe I'm saying it wrong. About 650,000, eight, maybe eight, 600 to 800,000 words. I can't remember exactly. 40 authors over 1,600 years. 66 books. Amen. Over a long period of time, there's a lot in here. Thousands of promises, thousands of statements. But you need to let the Lord lead you to the one that you need. Hello? You know, understanding is so powerful. He said, when you get wisdom, get understanding. Just don't have wisdom alone, because wisdom has to have an application. You have to know where to put it, how to use it, how to work it, you know? I like the statement that says, wisdom is a correct application of knowledge, knowing what to do with knowledge. You know, Isaiah 11.2 is so powerful. That's another thing you can write down, Isaiah 11.2. It says the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, which is physical strength and power, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Fearing God means what? What does it mean? It means you, you reverence God enough that you say, I can't mess up with my life. I have to do what you want. I have to walk on the course and plan that you have for me. And if you do that, you know, something so great will happen for you. Let me tell you something. Hebrews 6.10 is a, is a very powerful scripture, which I so, it's so endeared to my heart. He said, I'm not unjust to forget. Hi, baby. Queen baby. There you are. Hi, mommy. Jumbo. Yes, you. He's the princess on the throne. What's up, mommy? Bishop, mommy. Bishop, baby. Can we ordain a bishop as a baby? No, you can't do that biblically. Husband of one wife, not greedy. She don't even know what money is yet. But she's, look, she's nodding her head. Look, look, look. She's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll make you a bishop one day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> she's so cute. Look at her. I want my phone. I want to take a picture. I love cute babies. I remember this baby. If I ever see her later, I said, ah, little bishop baby. Bishop. There you are. <laughs> Let me zoom in on you. Okay, smile, baby. Wave at me. Say hi. Okay. Let her do it herself. Go ahead. Give me a wave. Ah, hey, praise the Lord. Give her a hand clap. She, she deserves that. Hey. Okay. But I look pretty good myself. Praise the Lord. I didn't expect that, but there you go.
The fear of God will make you feel a reverence for his plan, his purpose. And you know, you just have to do things right. I, I don't understand crooks, but I understand. You know, I don't understand liars and thieves, but yet I understand. But guess what? Their future is not good. There's one person that did wrong things, and I won't tell details. I mean, really bad. And the Lord spoke to me about three, four days, about four or five days ago, uh, early in today's Sunday, maybe the beginning of the week. And he said, I've already put that one in the wilderness. God spoke to me. Jehovah spoke to me. That guy's in trouble. And uh, some people... When they do things so wickedly, they'll just end up in the grave and maybe down below. Not good. But yet I understand. You see, what can give you peace in life is understanding. Another thing I found out, you can't rationalize the irrational. If something's irrational, you ever hear people say, I don't know why they did that. I don't know how they could be like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. What's wrong with them? How could they do that? How could they be like that? Yeah. Yeah. You, okay, from a good heart, you're saying that, but you're trying to rationalize the irrational. You see someone that's irrational, just leave them there. And if you want to pray for them, pray that they can somehow repent to escape hell. Lift your hands. Pray for them that they can repent for themselves enough to escape hell because hell is eternal. Once you go in, you can't come out. It's a one-way... Uh, it's a one-way passage. You can't come back out. And even though some people are so evil, you wonder if they kind of deserve it. <laughs> but you don't want, you don't wish that upon anybody because it's too bad. And even ourselves, you know, we weren't good, right? None of us were good. Jesus saved us. Praise the Lord. It's his goodness that brought us to, to himself. Yes? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can you lift your hands and thank him for saving you? Happy Mother's Day, by the way. But every day is Jesus Day for me, so happy Jesus Day. And seven days a week, it's Jesus Day for me. Amen. So all you mothers, wherever you are, I see some babies, so I guess there's some mothers. You see these babies here? You see them over there? There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. I guess there's some mothers. That's how, they, that's how they came to be there, right? Lift your hands if you're a mom and say, Happy Mother's Day to me. To you, I mean to you. I can't say, I can't say for myself. Praise the Lord. So the wicked, you have to escape. Wisdom will help you do that. Write that down. Wisdom will help me escape from the wicked. Make my escape from wickedness. And the quicker you get wisdom in a situation, the quicker you're going to get delivered from the situation. Unfortunately, sometimes you go through something because you were connected with the wrong person. Wisdom, another application of wisdom is this. It will, it will cause you to differentiate between wise and foolish. Hello? 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 Someone say hello. 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 It's not a good word, really. Hello? What does that mean? No good. Hello? I don't know. It's closer to hallowed be thy name. I think it's better. Maybe that's why someone in Kenya did that, you know? Hello instead of hello. Maybe they didn't say hell, hello. That's not good. Hello, it's like hallelujah. Hallowed be thy name. It's closer to that, right? So I can understand. Maybe the Kenyan way on that is good. I think it's better than the other one. In America, if you said hello to someone, they think you lost your mind. They'd be like, what? Are you illiterate? It's hello, H-E-L-L-O. That's the way we spell it. But I, I think I need to tell people in America, hey, you got it wrong. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. Hello. I used to see hello. I'm like, what? How could people spell it wrong? But maybe it's better that way. I'm just thinking about that. 
understanding, the spirit of understanding. Lift your hands and say, Lord, give me the spirit of wisdom and understanding and knowledge and power and strength. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me from yourself. When you receive those attributes of him, you, your life becomes just completely different. Everything begins to shine. Everything begins to move. Everything begins to, you know, become fixed. Shalom is one of the names of God. Yes? Are you there? Hit your neighbor next to you and say, hello. Are you, are you there? Say, talk to the prophet. Talk to the prophet. Say, hi. Hey, Ben. Hallelujah. Say something. Thank you very much. I'm waiting. Okay, good. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you very much. Write this down. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, which is, could be like the word of wisdom. The spirit of might, which is power. <laughs> hey, I brought two shirts extra and I didn't change my shirt. Oh, anyway, I'm okay. I just remember now. It's too late now. Say, excuse me a minute. I want to go change my costume and come back. No, hey, it's too late. I'm already at the pulpit. <laughs> I was going to wear a different one for this service. Hi, baby. How are you? Praise the Lord. You're so cute. God bless you. God bless all these babies here. And Bishop, Bishop baby here. Glory. She's like, she's, every time I talk to her, she starts going like this. Yeah. Saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to be like that with God, yes? Let's say, yeah, 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 yeah. Lift your hand and say, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Say it, yes, it's good. It's a good word. Yes, yes, yes. Now, if I tell you, say, yes, it feels good. Then if I say, no, ooh. You all went quiet. Stop saying no to yourself. Say no to the devil, but say yes to yourself. Lift your hands again and say yes. You see, I just killed the atmosphere when I said that. You people, you people need to be stronger that I can't affect you. You got, like I got God already. No matter what you say, I'm good. <laughs> Start from that position, no matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you are. We have the victory already through Christ Jesus, our Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Nobody. I'm victorious. Write that down. Say, I am victorious. All right, I was talking about the name Shalom. Shalom we use for peace. Sometimes when you get a lot of wisdom... It could, it could be irritating because you see all the foolishness and it's frustrating. But then when you get understanding, you balance it out with some understanding. Now, <laughs> now you understand the situation so you could be a little bit at peace. Because you say, you know what? I see how it is. That's how it is. Thank God it's not me. It's over there. I'm over here. But I understand. I understand. I even like the word under and then stand, right? Something is under me and I'm standing on it. What is it? It's the power of God's brilliant mind. So chaos is the thing that causes disorder. It's even a demon. Like in the, in the Hindu religion, there's a God of chaos. I think, it, I don't want to say the name because I don't want to invoke those spirits. Sometimes you say a name of a demon and they go, hi, you call my name. No, I'm not calling your name. But I know the name, but I won't say it. But there's one they call the God of chaos, the God of war, the God of violence. He has a name. It's a demon. But shalom, shalom, Jehovah shalom, one of the definitions from the Hebrew word shalom means I am the God who destroys chaos. Lift your hands. I am the destroyer of chaos. 
Another definition of shalom is nothing broken, nothing missing. Everything is good in my world. I have everything. And that's how I get peace. Can I give you another scripture? Now, wherever Jehovah Shalom came from Genesis, it's in the book of Genesis. You can find the scripture and look at the reference of Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Kana, Q-A-N-N-A, which means uh, the God, he's a jealous God. He's jealous over us. Rohi, Nisi, his banner over us, his love. Rophe, the Lord our healer. Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. Jaira, our provider, the one who sees our future and will see to it, the vision bearer, the provision master, Jehovah Jaira. But where you get the reference of Shalom is in Genesis. Now, let's look at um, in, in the book of Job, chapter 22, beginning in verse 21, all the way to verse 28, says that he is the one who summons us forward and he says, now return to the almighty and thereby you're doing good and thereby you'll be at peace. Return to the almighty and then you'll have peace. Why? Because you're in his presence. Psalm 1611 is another verse for that, another reference for that. In his presence is fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The Holy Spirit, they call him koinonia, the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. What really, uh, uh, a definition of the Greek word koinonia is, he's the one who holds us by our right arm and leads us in the way we should go. Isn't that powerful? And Isaiah 48, 17 is also a beautiful scripture. It says, I am the Lord your God, God told Isaiah, who teaches you to profit, meaning to get ahead, to make money, to have a profit, to have increase and success. I'm the God who helps you do that. Praise the Lord. If you want to have profit, you need to find a real profit. P-R-O-F-I-T, you want that, you, gotta, you should find a good profit. P-R-O-P-H-E-T. <laughs> Somebody, uh, anyway, I, I don't want to let them, if they ever see this video, I don't want them to know. How do I say it in code that they can never guess I'm talking about them anyway? but Somebody says they're, they're prophet, and then they're acting like the devil, you know? So I said, it's a good prophet you have, isn't it? Praise the Lord. One of these prophets around. Yeah, that's a good prophet. You, 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 you're slandering everybody. You're, you're, you're talking rubbish. You're, you're, you're saying evil things like you've turned into somebody else. You, you really have a good prophet. No, you don't. I don't believe in that. A real prophet is anointed to help you succeed. Lift your hands. If you're not moving forward in the realm of progress, learning things, getting blessed, Getting pushed forward, you haven't met a real prophet. Sorry to tell you. I don't care what they call themselves. Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, a friend of mine for more than 20... Yeesh, when did we first meet? 2008, 2018. Uh, ay, ay, ay. It's about 26 years now. More than 25 years we've been friends. More than 25 years. And my father, who was the political boss of New York City, helped Dr. Rodney Howard Brown get the permitting for Madison Square Garden for his big Good News Gospel Crusade in 1998. Or 99, I think it was in 99 when they did it in the summer. Six weeks he rented Madison Square Garden. For six weeks. He said the whole thing cost him over $6 million. And he did it by faith. And he didn't have the money. And the money just came in. And it set the course of his ministry. Anyway, I have my, my hand is in that through. My father helped him get the garden. It was a very difficult place to uh, possess, to use for a venue, for, especially for church. And my father helped him do that. Yeah. You know? So anyway, that's just a by-the-way testimony. But... Uh, 
He said something very funny. He said, everybody these days is an apostle or a prophet. <laughs> everybody. Everybody. He said, I wonder if there are more prophets, apostles than people now. You have a guy in his garage with three people and half a microphone, and he's an apostle. I'm an apostle. What's your name? Apostle. He said, you idiot. Call yourself a pastor or a servant. I'm a servant. I'm helping the people. I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then you say, okay, now, you're acting like an honorable person talking like that, you know. I'm an apostle. I'm bishop so-and-so. Who? Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Let's see the anointing. Let's see the fruit of your, of your work. Let's feel God coming through you. Can I tell you? Whoever you can feel God coming through, you'll honor them. Lift your hands. If you feel God coming from somebody, whether they have a name, if they just use their first name, like, hi, my name is Thomas. Thomas. It's in the Bible in John chapter 20, and Jesus saith unto Thomas, that my name is there. That's my great, 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 great grand uncle in the gospel the apostle Thomas, and he went to the east, and God told Paul, you can't go that way, stay over here, go to the Gentiles, and then, oh, the, oh. and then Peter was, had his own assignment somewhere, and Paul had his, and Thomas went that way, and God forbid Paul from going to Asia Minor. The Holy Spirit spoke to Paul, said, don't go that way, you can't go that way, that's not your assigned place, but Thomas went there, praise the Lord. And St. Thomas, they call him, is the patron apostle of India. The whole nation of India reveres Thomas because Thomas actually went there. After he left Jesus and Jesus was resurrected, the Holy Spirit said, you go that way, you Paul stay here, you Peter stay over here. Each one had their assignment. But they never, I don't think they ever went around calling themselves apostles I'm apostle so-and-so. I don't think so. My name is Peter. I'm a fisherman trying to follow Jesus. That's me. I'm Thomas. Thomas, I said, I want to see the whole. I want to see that I'll believe. I'm James. I'm James the greater and I'm James the lesser. I'm Nathaniel. I'm Bartholomew. I'm Andrew. Amen. I'm uh, Judas, I'm Jude, I'm uh, Peter, James, and John. Praise the Lord. They use their real name. But guess what? The power of God came through them. Peter came out of the upper room. After doubting God, he came out and signs and wonders began to happen and thousands of people came to the, into the church. Lift your hands. Just by the Spirit of the Lord. He didn't, I'm sure, if you meet Peter later, they, the Catholics say he's the, he's the man at the gate. I don't believe it. There's no, there's no gatekeeper. Guess what? If you're going to heaven, you're not going to meet Peter. Peter's not going to be sitting there like this with a table going, let me check the name. The angels can do that. huh? So that's, that's a, a thought of somebody. It's a nice thought, but I, I doubt you'll meet Peter at the gate. You'll just come in. The glory of God will be so strong there. God's not going to let Peter have jurisdiction of anything like, you know. He's in there like everybody else. Praise the Lord. But I'm sure he didn't say, hey, I'm bishop. I'm the bishop here. I'm the, I'm the great man here. He didn't, they didn't do that. Hello. They just manifested God. Lift your hands. Say, I want to manifest God in my generation. Lift your hands. Say, I want to manifest God in my generation. I want to be a manifester of the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and when it happens, people will say, well, now this man has been with God. You know, it's, there's evidence. To be a real apostle, you'd have to say, well, uh, I've been with Jesus and it's evident. You know, the Bible talks about the marks of the apostle. Can I tell you, some of the marks are not just like a a nice robe, and a shiny ring. It's also the scars and tears of the warfare. Lift your hands. How many know this gospel will cause us to suffer too? We'll suffer for, 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 the, for the walk with God. Sacrifice with the walk of God. Jesus said, carry your cross. 
If any man could deny himself, the same can follow me. Say, I'm, I'm called to be a manifester of God. I'm called to be a manifester of God. Say it, I'm called to manifest the presence of God. If I can't do it, say, if I can't do it, it's to be questioned whether I really know him. Oh, yes, because if he's with you, things will happen. Supernatural things will happen. Things will change for the better. And God wants us to understand another principle. Okay, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Also now, sacrifice, servanthood, humility, manifesting God. I've said all these things. Now, let me say something else. You have to talk to things to say what you want to happen. Lift your hands. you got to speak to the mountain in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, and it will be removed if you have faith and doubt not. And the next verse, Mark eleven twenty four 24, said, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and then you will have them. Now, let me finish Job. Return to the Almighty, Job twenty two twenty one, 21, and thereby you're doing good, and then you will be at peace. And you skip down. He said, you'll have gold in the dust. You'll have he said, the Almighty will be your gold and your silver. You'll have the presence of God. Therefore, you're going to have prosperity. Help that baby, mama, please. Then in the 28th verse, it's so powerful. He said, decree a thing, and it will be established unto you. Oh, my God. Decree a thing. Say with me. I will decree a thing. And it will be established unto me. Why? Because you've been with God. You know, some people can throw out things and say things, and it doesn't mean that it's really going to happen. But also, you have to use your faith and you have to be strong and persevering. You have to be persevering. You have to be tough. You have to say, I won't quit. I'll keep going. I'll never stop. I'll never stop on this mission. Let's say you speak something. Say, Father, I declare this. All right? And sometimes God just doesn't want us always to be crying to him about everything. He also wants us to speak to the thing ourselves. How many know in Genesis 126, he, he said, I want you to have dominion. You, 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 you. Not me. I already have it. <laughs> Does Jesus need help to have dominion? Hello? Does he need it? No. He has it already. I love Revelation 5, verse 12, or starting in the ninth verse. Revelation 5, ninth verse says, He's the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. Oh, my. And then the angels begin to uh, confirm that. You know, you read the whole passage of Scripture there, Revelation 5. And they shouted with a loud voice. And they, you know, then there's the song that came, the song of the redeemed and all that. Read all that. But then at the 12th verse, the 12th verse, he said something so powerful. He said, that he would receive... Riches and power and wisdom and strength and glory, honor, and blessing. Those seven things. Does, but, I, but I begin to ask the Lord now. You said you received this, but why did you receive them when you're already God? He said to me, I stood in the gap to take it back to then give it over unto you. The keys of death, hell, and the grave he snatched from the devil when he descended down into hell, and he took it back. Same thing with riches, power, wisdom, strength, and glory, honor, and blessing for the purpose of us walking in dominion. That's our job. So can you imagine Jesus? Here, here he is sitting like I could use my baby on the baby bishop on the throne here, right? Sit on the throne. 
Here I am. I'm Jesus. Look at me. Look at all that I have. Wouldn't he be teasing us? He's not a bad father. He's not going to tease his children. If you're a person and you have something and you see a, a baby, Jesus even said, if you come to me for bread, will I give you a stone? Huh? If I come to you asking you, please give me some fish. Praise the Lord. Some tilapia from the lake. I want to roast it. I want to make some rice. I want to have a salad. I want to have some tea and some dawa. And I want to sit here and I want to eat. I'm hungry. Jesus is going to say, nah, you can't have it. I'll give you here. Here's a snake. You know the Bible? You know that, you know that story in the Bible? If you ask him for a fish, will he give you a snake? If you ask him for bread, will he give you a rock? No. If he took it back from the devil... The dominion factor, the dominion mission, if I can call it, he took it all back and said, now I'm going to sit here with it by myself. Ha, 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 I got it, you don't. Yeah? Like other kids, they have something and they go, hey, I got this and you don't got it. I got it. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, God is not like that. I said, God is not like that. He took it back for us to have it. Lift your hand. Say, it's for me. Another thing I'll tell you, it's not just for somebody else. How many know you're going to have your own testimony? Lift your hands and let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. You're going to have your own testimony. Where's that keyboard, man? I think I need you again. Play a little song, but just play a little bit softly if you can. That music thing that you had going there, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Let's pray, 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 pray. Say, Lord, it's for me, it's for me. The blessing is for me. You didn't keep it for yourself, thank God. You didn't take it all and then leave us hanging somewhere, huh? You went on the cross, came off the cross, were pulled off the cross. When you were dead physically, they broke your hands and feet off the nails and took the crown. Maybe they left the crown of thorns. Maybe they pulled it off. I don't know. Maybe they wrapped him in a garment. I hope so, because he was not dressed. It was horrible. And then they threw him in that place in Golgotha. I was there in Jerusalem. I've, I've actually been there. I, I stood in the tomb. And when I was there, I didn't feel the presence of God. I thought, if there's anywhere on earth I should feel the presence of God, it should be in the place where he, I feel the anointing here. Woo! I feel, it should be in the place where he was resurrected, but he wasn't there. Then I'm standing and I'm looking at the tomb. You know, they have a little gate fence. And then across, it's a very small room, uh, and then across past the gate, they put a gate so no one could go touch it, you know. And the rock on the side of the thing where Jesus' body was actually laid, is there, and you could see it. <laughs> and I felt like, oh my God, I'm actually standing here where you were, right here, right here. I can almost reach my hand and touch the place. It's so close. It's right there. I could, I could see it. But the whole place with the atmosphere was dry. There was no presence. There was a, and I began to, th I feel, felt uh, uncomfortable. And then all of a sudden while I'm standing, I felt a hand hit me on the back like this. It was physical. I, I, I wasn't mistaken. I wasn't dreaming. I turned. There was nobody. I thought, who touched me? There was nobody there. And then the presence of the Lord came to me to talk to me, not to be in the place. Because let me tell you, when Jesus left there, he left for good. That's why the presence of God is not there. It wasn't pleasant for him to go through that. When the Spirit of God came and raised them up and the men came the army came and they rolled the stone. Or the angels actually, excuse me, it was the angels. The angels, it was, the, the Roman soldiers, they were trying to guard the place to keep him in. But the angels came and rolled the stone and he walked out. 
You could see that last scene of the Passion of the Christ, the movie, The Passion of the Christ. It's a, it's astounding, you know. I felt the hand hit me on the back. I was turning around. There's nobody there. I looked outside. I went outside a little bit. I was like, "There's nobody. There's nobody anywhere. It's just me." And there were people outside, but far down, a little bit far down. And I was there by myself. The Lord let me have my own moment there. Usually there's a lot of people in places like that. But somehow when I was there, everybody left. But this hand touched me. I'm sure the angels pushed the people out so I could have that experience. Because I would have thought, if someone was right there, I would have thought in my mind that somebody hit me in the back, but then they acted like they didn't do it, you know? And I wouldn't be able to prove that it wasn't a human hand. I couldn't prove it. But because there was no human there but myself, I knew it was a heavenly hand of the angel of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit came just like this and stood. I could feel his fire on my side uh, standing there. And, he, and the Lord spoke to me. Uh, look, look. I turned my head. And on the door, on the door, there's a, a sign, a wooden plaque carved out. You know what it says? He is not here, <laughs> for he is risen on the door. I lifted my hands and said, oh, I see, I see, I see. He's not here. That, how many thank God he's not there anymore? He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And he ever lives to make intercession for us. Power, wisdom, amen, riches, strength, glory, honor, and blessing is for us. Jesus took it back, not for himself, but to give it to us. Luke 2.52, how Christ Jesus uh, gained more wisdom and then grew in stature. And wisdom, and then in the favor of God, and also favor with men. Lift your hands, let's pray. The favor of God. It doesn't come cheap. It doesn't come just because you asked for it once or twice or thrice. It comes because you're living and walking according to his plan and his purpose. And I release now from heaven... By the Spirit of the Lord, as God's servant and his prophet, I release the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the power, those attributes of the Holy Ghost upon you. God wants to take you to a new place. Hello. He wants to take you to a place of power and grace. Uh, he wants you to take care of yourself and your life and not have anything in the closet that's not right. He wants you to have everything bare and open and transparent before him and say, God, wherever I have a problem, help me fix it. Wherever I need help, help me. I want to live pure and holy before you as your own servant and your own vessel. God will honor that. Let's get rid of the titles. Let's get rid of the competition. Let's get rid of the, I have my church and we're over here and you're over there and you hate anybody else that's successful. You have no business deliberating in those arenas in your mind. That's sinful. The people that do that, they don't go very far. Or else they fall down the road. God wants us to look in the mirror. Like I said in Corinthians 3.18. 2 Corinthians 1. 2nd or 1st. 3.18. It said, beholding the image of the glory of the Lord, looking in the mirror. Meaning you're looking at yourself. Everybody lift your hands and close your eyes. Say, Lord, show me the mirror. Put the mirror in front of me. Put the mirror in front of me. Let me see you for who you are. And let me be great in your presence, powerful in your anointing, moving in your spirit, successful in life, everything changing for the better. Fill me with your wisdom. Fill me with your knowledge. Fill me with your understanding. Fill me with the Holy Ghost and power that I can walk according to your ways. Now, Father, everything on this, in this untoward world, fix it for us. Isaiah 119 said, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. 
I was just in the other side of the road, the other side of the area here, region here. When I was leaving there, I felt a little happy for a moment. And I just said to the Lord as I was driving, nobody heard me. It was just my prayer to him from myself. If this is what you want for me, I'll do it. Anything you want, I'll do it. I don't care. I just want to be with you. Lift your hands. I feel the presence of the Lord starting to fall here right now. Lift your hands and receive the presence of the Lord right now. Yes, Lord. It wasn't here before, but it's here now. He, I mean. It wasn't manifested before, but it's manifesting now. Right now, right now, just in the last one minute. Lift your hands and receive the touch of the Holy Ghost right now. Just where you are, not from the hands of man. I'm not laying my hands on anybody. I don't even want to do that. You don't need it from me. You need it from him. Let him touch you yourself. It's the greatest way it happens. Do you know when the Lord called me, he appeared to me and called me into the ministry. I won't tell the whole testimony now. But the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me in person in an open vision. When after I had just gotten saved and called me and ordained me. He did it. I, did, I didn't get it from the hands of men. It's okay that a man that's anointed can lay hands on you, but be careful for a man that's not anointed. Sometimes we're having problems because the wrong hand touched us. You have to be very careful. I said this last Sunday. I was in a great church at a conference with Archbishop uh, Harrison Nanga. I was speaking with him two days. Two days, last Saturday and Sunday. I was with him. I preached and he preached after Saturday and Sunday afternoons, both days. And I said this as I was closing. I just watched, saw it on the video. I had forgotten I said it. But I said this, watch the hand that touches you. Because if it's an unclean hand, you'll have unclean effects. You want to make sure it's a good hand. Lift your hands. But how many know the hand of God is always good? There's nothing wrong with him. So I challenge you, get it direct. I see my sister here getting lost in the presence of God. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost touch you right now, right now, every one of you right now. From him himself, a visitation. Father, we schedule visitations for your own people. Lift your hands right now. Say, I have an appointment. I have an appointment with the boss. I have an appointment with the Almighty. Father, schedule that personally for each one of us and let things change for the better from then. Let everybody be a gospel man, a gospel woman, a gospel person full of power. Let us all forget about who says what, who wants what, what we think we want, who we think we are. Let's leave all that to the side and lift our hands and say, God, it's you that I need. When you come and move through me, now things are going to really roll. Hallelujah. Jesus was in the tomb and he was dead. <laughs> that's bad. Someone say, that's bad. <laughs> that's very bad. He was in the tomb. He was dead, physically dead. Hello? And there was a big stone in front that even if he got up physically by himself as a man to push it, he couldn't move it. But guess who came and showed up? Lift your hands. The Spirit of God raised him from the dead. And then the angels of the Lord came and rolled the stone away and he walked out in a resurrected body. But he could not, I want you to get this revelation, he could not do that for himself. It took the hand of God. How many want God to come to your life like that? I don't care who you are. I don't, it doesn't matter where you are, what your name is, where you're from. None of that matters. Whatever anybody thought they had for you, it doesn't matter. Lift your hands, everybody. When God approves of you and shows up and he likes you, there's nothing greater. Nothing greater than that. I love you.
love you, Father. Tell the Lord you love him. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Close your eyes and lift your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Shoko Mahadi Fale Sote Shale Esakitela Sokoche. It's a supernatural language. Now, if you don't speak in tongues yet, don't feel bad. Just say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Father, give me my prayer language. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it. He'll give it to you. It's a gift, you know. He said, Freely you receive the Holy Ghost, the keys of the kingdom. All right, hold the music, hold the music. Everybody stand on your feet right now. Just pray in the spirit. Sweating here, but I don't care. I'm a servant. <laughs> Sweating, working, I don't care. I'm a servant. Servants are tough. Pay the price. Pay the price. Pay the price. You have to pay the price. You want power that shakes the world? Oh, it's a hard thing to ask for that. Remember when Elisha asked Elijah, I want a double portion of your spirit? And Elijah said, son, you ask a very hard thing. But nevertheless, if you see me when I go up, which meant Elisha had to stay there and be very close and not move out of the way. And then the mantle fell on him. And he did twice the miracles. Elijah in the Bible did 16 major miracles in the book of uh, 1 Kings. 2 Kings, we see that Elisha did 32 major miracles, exactly double. He had received the double portion. But Elijah said to him, you want this? You ask a very hard thing. You ask for something that's very difficult to walk with. Elijah showed up and began to prophesy. <laughs> Next thing you know, Jezebel said, kill that man. Hello. Then he went and killed all her prophets, and she got more than mad. Say, by this time tomorrow, you'll be like them. And he ran for his life and hid, under, hid in a place in the, in the forest or under the tree. And he said, God, is this it for me now? Elijah went through some things. You think in this world you're not going to go through anything, but you're going to have power to shake the nation, to shake the nations? No, it doesn't work like that. God is challenging people, you know, pay the price. Lift your hands. I'm not finished, but I'm going to stop here, and we'll pick it up another time. I'll hit the pause button, but we'll pick it up another day. But the Lord is going to do something in this region, in this land. I felt it this morning. No, last night I was speaking to my bishop friend here, and I said, you know what? I just see like something's going to happen in that region for the move of God. How many believe that? How many believe that? Something's going to happen in this land. But it's going to come through holy men of God that have power within. The Bible says in 2 Peter, I think it's 121, 20 and 21. I think it's 2 Peter 120 and 21. It says, prophecy came not by the impulse of men or the will of man or human desire, depending on the version you're reading, but it came through holy men of God as they were moved and they spoke by the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, God doesn't just speak any old way, any old time to just any old person. If he talks, if he talks to a prophet, he's going to do something that's beyond phenomenal, supernaturally. Why? Because the prophet man is his own man. The prophet lady is his own lady. Lift your hand and say, I want to be that. I want to be that. But I tell you in advance, there's a price. There's a price for the anointing. There's a price for the blessing. A lot of people don't want to give, you know. They don't want to give money. They don't want to be generous. They don't want to help anybody else. They want to take, 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 take. That will be a poor person. A rich person is a generous person. Proverbs 11.25 said, The generous person will become like a well-watered garden. A generous soul will be made fat 
I don't mean fat physically. We'll be made blessed, flourishing. A generous person will become a well-watered garden. How many want to be blessed? How many want to be a well-watered garden? How, wanna, how many want to be like a garden that just you, everything's flourishing and growing for you? Even when you don't tend to it, it just works anyway. I know one man, he keeps getting blessed, but this guy gave and he sacrificed his life. He's a giver. He's a big giver. He sees a preacher. He gives him. He's given away millions. You know, there was a prophecy that came in America and told one apostle, it said, uh, who I've known for many years, he said, uh, million dollar offerings are coming and the billion dollar flow is coming in your ministry this year. Do you know what? This one of his protégés, an evangelist, said, you know what? I'll be the one to give the million dollars. And he had like one point something million dollars in the bank. And he told the Lord, said, get me to three so I can cover my expenses and I'll be the one to give the million. Within some days, his, his income hit three million. He was there. He took the million, made a big check, had a live broadcast and presented it to the man of God live on air on television. And to, for someone to do something like that, that's almost unheard of, one million dollars, that's 130 million shillings. Just like that. Here it is. Take it. My gift to you. And he said to the man of God, he said, I want you to know something, doctor. I'm not giving this to you. I'm giving this to me. <laughs> Some of you don't know anything about this. Lift your hands. I'm going away. I know this is deep today, but try to work with us. I don't do this for you. I do it for myself. And guess what just happened to him? He was given a a $20 million property that's right next to the airport. It's right next to the other building God gave him. He just keeps getting more miracles. He's hosting a conference. He's having the giants of every nation in the kingdom of God that are alive today all to speak. And he's going to give them each like $100,000 each for speaking one day. He's just crazy like that. He started to, to give on this level, and then somebody gave him a Falcon 50 jet to use for free. Gave it to him. Lift your hands. You wonder, is he like special? No, he's a giver. Do you know what? It works. Tithing works. God said in his word, if you tithe, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive it. He said, I'll rebuke the devourer then for your sake, and I'll make you even a delightsome land for me, saith the Lord of hosts. I'll fill your barns with plenty. I'll do it for you. I'll pour you out. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 said so beautifully, said, you know, give your first fruits to the Lord. Give to him, give to him, give to him, and he'll fill your barns with plenty and your vats will overflow. Lift your hands. How many want to walk in the overflow? Everybody says yes, but do you want to do the biblical condition on how to get there? Then we see people that are so blessed but God said, if you tithe, you're blessed. If you don't, there's a curse added to your financial life. Did God lie? Does God tell stories and jokes? Never. Never. If it's in the word, it's real. If you obey it, you'll get blessed. If you sow, you're going to reap. If you tithe, you're going to be blessed. If you give, you got to give, 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 give. Someone said, Someone might say, I don't have very much to give. Well, give the little that you have. Take something God's given you and plant it as a seed into the anointing and you'll see a result coming back to you. God does not tell funny stories. He means what he said. If you do what he said, even, you know what? People always talk about faith. You know, I got to work by faith. I know that. I understand that. But there's sometimes when you just do what the word says, even not trying to use faith. You just say, I'm just going to do this. And it will work for you anyway. Whether you felt like it or not. Whether you felt happy and felt like singing and dancing or not. You know, sometimes you can give and you feel a little bit sad. Hello? Hello? If, you, if, you've ever, if you've never given and felt sad about it, you've not given a lot. Just because you gave something, you said, man, I gave so much. Why did I do that? 
I, I've had that experience in my life many times. I thought if I had that money right now, <laughs> if I had that money right now, I could do something with it, a need that I have right now, but I had given that. <sighs> I remember one time I brought a man of God a check, cashier's check for 50,000 U.S. dollars, and I gave him the check. <sighs> I thought about it. I thought about it sometimes, and I said, that $50,000, I, I could use it, but I'd rather have the harvest. Lift your hands. When you plant seed, huh? When you give on levels that are higher than you can even feel like doing, God will honor you. Now, I understand a prophet is always usually oftentimes ahead of his time, but I'm releasing this word over the land because it'll work in the spirit world. But I want everybody right now, before we go, I want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed. You could reach into your whatever, your pocket or your bag or wherever you have some piece of money and I want you to come and just drop it on the altar and say, I want to tap the grace of this. Pro I want to tap the grace of this servant of God. I want to tap the grace. I want to walk in power. I want to walk in blessings. Just begin to prepare yourself right now. Get a seed. When you're ready, come and just drop it here right now on the altar. Everybody do that right now. Everybody. Everybody. Get something. Whatever you can do. Whatever you can do. Whatever you can do. Whatever you can do. Pour it. God is here right now. I'll tell you why I know that for sure. Because he came with me. He came with me. Get a seed right now. Oh, do people like to use M-Pesa? You like to use M-Pesa on the phone? Anybody, can I see your hand if you want to do M-Pesa? You're an M-Pesa person. Okay, can I give you a phone number? 0706. I'll, 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 I'll slow down. I'll take time to give. Make sure you get it. 0706. 164. 191. 07. 06-164-191. That is my number. You'll see it. Thomas Manton. It's the real number. It's the real me. 706-164-191. And you could sow a seed by M-Pesa. If you have cash, you could just come and drop it here. Praise the Lord. We came here to speak. And the pastor here, I trust, will sow a seed into our ministry from the church. We, we expect that when we go somewhere. And uh, God will bless you. Just begin coming from everywhere. Come with something. If you have a baby next to you, put something in their hand and let them come soon. Pastor, you can use that M-Pesa number, or if you have cash, you can do that. Sow it into this grace. A seed is for you. I love to say that. A seed, mama, a seed is for you. It's for you. You're sowing. When you give, you release it from your hand, but your other hand is ready to catch the harvest. So whenever you give out, you don't lose it, you're investing it. Are you, do you understand that? And the harvest will come back. According to the word of God. If you believe the word of God, if we believe our Bibles, we'll see it happen. Can you say amen? All right, I'm done. I want to go. I have some other meetings. Lift your hands. Stretch your hands out toward me right now. I said I received the touch of the grace. Now, the number I said, I want to hear some testimonies. I love testimonies. I want to see that you get blessed. How many have a desire to go into business? How many need a new job? How many need something good to happen for you? I pray right now that God will cause the heavens to open for you and locate you with something good. But if you're following the plan of God, if you're following his principles, working all the time, with his word and obedience, he will bless you and honor you. Lift your hands. Do you believe I'm his prophet? Do you believe it? Do you believe I'm his prophet? Thank you, young man. Blessings on your son. Do you believe I'm his servant? Do you believe it? Can you feel it? 
I declare over you that you're going to see new things happen for you from today. Lift your hands. From today, from today, from this afternoon right here. New things are going to begin to happen for you right now. And I want to hear your testimony. So the number I gave, 0706-164-191. If you're outside of Kenya, watching, plus 254-706-164-191. It'll be on the screen. You can write to me and send your testimonies. I love testimonies. I want to hear that you're getting blessed. Shakarabas. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. We're done, we're done, we're done. We're going. All the best walking down the road. Hallelujah. All the best to you today. Siku Jema. Chioni Jema. Mungu Nemwema. Buona Sefiwe. Hallelujah. Upada Kiwe. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Do you know I love people if I came all the way here? Do you believe I love you? So can, can you believe that? Why else would I do what? I, why would I do what I'm doing? My love for God and my love for His people. But I want to say God first. <laughs> I have to. I have to confess, Bishop, and Bishop Baby, Bishop Baby Bobby. Uh, what do you want? Are you hungry now? You want some milk now? What do you want now? She's ready. She's ready for something. I found out something, man of God. When a baby cries, it's because the baby wants something. Yeah? So the smart person will go, why is that baby making all that noise? No, you won't do that. Say, what does the baby want? The baby wants something. Let me figure out what it is. You ever see a baby? Your baby's crying. They want something. The second you give the baby the thing, they stop. How many know we're like that, talking to God? Crying, 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 petitioning him, crying to him. And then all of a sudden he gives us something. We stop crying. We go, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lift your hands. Tell him thank you. 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 Okay. I want to tell you something else. My website is thomasmanton.com. My name, Thomas, T H O M A S. M-A-N-T-O-N dot com. And you can find all our social media channels there and information how you can partner with us and also to share your testimony. I want to hear your testimony. And when we have a, a, a big event somewhere in the region, I, I, I foresee it. I saw it this morning, even yesterday. I saw like something's going to open up in this, this part of the world here. We're going to do something here. Something... Something's going to happen. I don't know. I don't know when, how, where. I just know it by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. I want to see you there. How many will come and tell a friend? And we'll have musicians. We'll have other preachers. We'll have a, we'll have a powerful time. It'll be a Holy Ghost move. It'll be, a, it'll be a, a little conference or something we'll do. All right. Stretch your hands out toward, the, toward, toward, the, toward me right now. And say, Lord, I connect with this grace. Spirit of the Lord, touch me as your prophet has said. Spirit of God, visit me as your prophet has told us today. As you had him say to me, say, as you had him say to me, visit me, Lord, and bless my life in Jesus' name. All right, I love you. Let's give the Lord, let's give the Lord a wave, a clap offering. Do you love me? I'm not so sure, but I, I want to find out before I go. Do you love me? I'm not so sure, but I'd like you to... Can, can you blow me a kiss? Oh, really? Are you sure? Can I have another one? Oh, I feel it. Can we give Jesus one? Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley bright and morning star, fairest of 10,000. Lift your hands to him. Bishop and overseer of our souls, everlasting father, amen, faithful and true. The amen, the faithful and the true, the alpha, the omega, the king of kings and the lord of lords, the door, the day spring, the day star, the great shepherd, the door of the sheep, 
the soon and coming king. We love you. We thank you for what you're doing in our generation. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm Thomas Manton IV. God bless you. I'll see you another time, I, I trust. Have a great day. Amen. Biblia inasema neno linalotoka kwenye kinywa cha nabii ni neno linatoka kwenye kinywa cha Mungu. Because God speaks to us through the prophets. Amen. Na huu mwaka wa 2024 maombi yangu kwa kanisa ni tutoke kwa umaskini. Amen. Because poverty poverty is not our portion. Pastor na angalia anga saa zingine vile wa Kristo. Yaani zingine mpaka unakula ugali na turungi. Eh? Mpaka ile maandiko inasema the kingdom of heaven belongs to the poor inakuwa ni yako. Au mwaka tunaweza barikiwa. Amen. Nabii alinizungumzia siku moja, he spoke to me one time and he told me that um, you will never lack. You will do it, you will never lack and I believed it. I believed it. You will never lack and I believed it. Sasa zingine zizi tumeokoka tunahurumiwa na wale hawajaokoka. Yaani mpaka saa zingine tunakopa wale hawajaokoka. Hata kuna dugu nikutana naye ameenda kukopa Muislamu. Ko ene ukopa Muislamu na Muislamu akopesha ki Mkristo. Kuna Muislamu alinikopesha pikipiki mimi napenda pikipiki sana hata nimekuja na yangu hapa na nikaingia kwa matope kidogo pale. Sometimes Christians we are so poor and so needy that we borrow from the Muslims. Hmm? That we don't even know our position in the kingdom. Hu mwaka tukatane na umaskini. Amen. Mimi na bianga mke wangu ile chakula nataka kupata nikiwa tu hapa. Si si lazima nimtumie pesa ati anunue hiyo sukuma na hiyo lakini natavutaka kwa Facebook kasha kula kako na spinach na kanyama na nini na mwambia leo nataka kupata hiyo hmm? See sometimes we don't even eat well as Christians We don't eat the best of the land We don't enjoy anything We are like we are like a bunch of children suffering on earth and we refuse that spirit in the name of Jesus. So the the prophet spoke to us today. In in Job 22. 21 or 22? 21. But around verse 27 and 28, it says and I will decree a thing and it shall be done. Amen. Dale gadina, ni dale gadina. Hmm? Nimekata. Amen. Now, wacha niwambie. Tunaweza barikiwa. Tunaweza barikiwa kwa sababu ya maneno ya vinywa vyetu. That I refuse to be poor. And I accept the blessings of God for the rest of the year. Amen. I'm still believing God for 1 million Kenya shillings. Wewe sijui unaamini ati mwaka ukipata shilingi 100. Eh? Some of us are believing for 100 shillings. I'm believing God for 1 million. And I told the prophet when I get the million, 10% will belong to him. It is coming. He prophesied for me over that bike you see. That bike is <laughs> it, new. Amen. He prophesied He told me it is not God's will for you to be walking 
all the time walking. What did you tell us in the other church? That, that some of us walking is, is everything for us. Yeah. Ngombe na boli. This was in a fakutembea. Sio sisi. Na we uamini that you can come out of walking. <laughs> yeah, walking is for sheep and goats and cows. Nafuda, nafuda. Yeah, punda. Diyo zinafaa kutembea, sio sisi. Na we uamini. Amen. Anointing, man. I just unlock something. I, I, I didn't say it before. How many want your car? You want a car? Lift your hands. I prophesy. Woo, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I feel the anointing. How many want a vehicle? You need a vehicle. How many would like a bike? A bike. Or you want your own matatu business or something like that. And you want a vehicle to drive yourself. Lift your hands right now. Father, I thank you right now for the power of God. Moving to give people cars all across Kenya. People in your churches. They want walking all the time. Out in the rain. Out in the sun. Let me say something else. I, I forgot. To, I didn't say it earlier. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Uh, three, it, was, it was three Sundays today. On the 28th of uh, the last month. Now we're 5th, 28th. Two Sundays ago. Two Sundays ago. God had. Today's the third one. God, two Sundays ago, God had me prophesy against the rain. I was preaching in satellite over there in a very big church. And the iron sheets were on the roof. And while I was speaking, the rain started to come down. And the Holy Ghost had me stop and point to the heavens and say, this rain will stop. And the season of rain will stop. Amen. And the rain will regulate itself. Where's the rain right now? Look outside. Look all around you. Where was the rain last Sunday? Last Sunday was blue skies all day till the night. Lift your hands. The, pre the prophetic word came forth and God changed it. Now I want to tell you one more miracle. The cyclone that was coming to the coast, everybody was crying. Even the president talked about it on television. I said, sir, it's not going to happen. I know you're announcing we you prepare for the cyclone and the damage and the flooding. I said, no, sir, not correct. Even the president, I tell the president, not correct. It will not happen. I spoke against the cyclone. Do you know what happened? About They say about a couple of hundred kilometers out in the sea, it stopped and disappeared. Lift your hands right now. No cyclone in the coast, no more rain. Let me tell you, from today, you're not going to see a lot of rain anymore. It's over. Are you happy about it? How many know whether there's mud, poodles of water, or dry land, you need to have your own car? Lift your hands up right now. Claim it right now. Someone says, I don't know if I have the money. You don't, don't worry about the money. The money will come. Someone can give you a car. You don't need millions and millions and millions to get a car. You need some hundreds of thousands, maybe. You get a, a little car. Start there. Don't say, well, I need a Range Rover. I need a Land Cruiser. No, you're a child in cars. You got to grow up in cars. You don't start with a, a Mercedes GLS or a Range Rover Vogue or, 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 or you know, you know, the Land Cruiser ZX. You, you don't start there. The 300 model is a good car. Those cost tens of millions, okay? You start with just whatever can come your way. Get the car, tint the windows, put your music on. If you don't want to drive, get a friend who can drive you around. Now you drive in your car. Lift your hands. No more public. Someone said, how will I pay the insurance? You know, you could get a sticker. You pay for a sticker from the insurance company. It's not insure. I'm not saying you should do this, but I just want to help you. It's not insurance. Now you're the insurance. So you need to be very careful. But you can get a sticker for a few K. Just a few K. Just a few thousand shillings. And put it on the sticker. And no one out there can bother you. Your car is legal to drive. Lift your hands. Now you, you, you got to be careful. Because if you do anything, now you're responsible for everything. There's no insurance company. But you can legally drive a car with that sticker. 
and it doesn't cost a lot of money. You can get a car. Someone said, how will I maintain the car? Find the mechanic who you can trust, the Jew Akali, yes? Umbukali, Jew Akali, whatever. Those kind of people, I'm joking. Umbukali. Umbukali, you know what that is? Jua Kali, you know what that is? Are you okay? Oh, the sun is roasting us in here. We're getting tired. Praise and find someone that can help you. Lift your hands. It's doable. Lift your hands and say, I claim it for myself. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We bless God. We are in our service there. And I know that uh, prophet will come again. Will come again. Full swing. You know, this one, it was in a rush. But now, we'll organize. He will come full swing here. It is going to be powerful. And we are going also to invite other pastors in the region. So that they can get the impartation. Praise the Lord. Amen. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet, as a prophet, will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.